This used to be me. I was struggling on YouTube for the longest time searching up all of these tutorials and constantly leaving them so dissatisfied because they gave the most generic advice. So I spent two years posting on YouTube, trying out different things and strategies and trying to research the YouTube algorithm. And guess what? I figured it out. I started this year, January 2023, with 2,000 subscribers, and I had been stuck with 2,000 subscribers for the last two and a half years. By March 2023 this year, I was on 100K, and I was holding my beautiful plaque, 2,000 to 100,000 in three months. Fast forward to now, October 2023, and I have almost 700,000 subscribers. <laughs> And that's because I work smarter and not harder. And I'm about to spill all of the secrets in this video. As always, here are the video chapters. Don't forget to check out my podcast in the description. And I have a second YouTube channel where I show you how I live my life. So go check it out so we can be besties. Let's get into it. I wanna share with you guys how I persevered through all that failure, why YouTube means so much to me and some harsh truths you need to know when it comes to being on YouTube. It all started when I was 12 years old and I got my first computer. I started playing around with some editing software and I absolutely fell in love with it. It was my only hobby and I would rush back from school every single day to edit random videos. But at the same time, my main form of entertainment at that age was YouTube videos. I was so obsessed with the YouTuber era to the point where every single morning when I was getting ready for school, I'd be looking in the mirror, talking like a YouTuber, acting like a YouTuber, and hoping one day I would get to be a YouTuber. Fast forward two years later, I was 14 years old and I finally plucked up the courage to start my first YouTube channel. My first YouTube channel at 14 years old was all about beauty beauty, fashion, and lifestyle. I basically wanted to be like all of the YouTubers I was so obsessed with at the time. It was that era where back to school videos were all the rage, so I literally went to my secondary school on a Saturday to film a video all on my own. Everyone at my school the following Monday laughed at me for it. Why would you go to school on your own to film a video? That's so weird. Why does she think she's a YouTuber? But did that stop me? Absolutely not. And that is the first harsh truth when it comes to YouTube. People are going to have opinions about you, but it doesn't matter. You are here to market yourself to the masses. You can go viral and hit a million views. Then the few people that you used to go to school with, their opinions won't be so loud. As long as you believe in yourself and what you're doing, you're gonna win no matter what. Because guess what? My family didn't approve of me doing YouTube. My friends would laugh at me for doing it and everyone in my school made fun of me for doing it. But Oh, look at this. Anyways, that first YouTube channel lasted for about a year because I wasn't very consistent and I had my school exams, so I just quit. But that burning desire to edit and create content never went away. Six whole years later, I was in university and I decided to set up my second ever YouTube channel, this one that you're watching right now. That was in the year 2020. I had completely reinvented myself, my confidence had grown, and I decided it was time to actually make time for what I loved doing because university was not the one for me. I spent those last two years of university experimenting with my craft, vlogging my university experience, doing a few tutorials here or there, and I had no idea that by the time I graduated, I would take the plunge and try to do YouTube full time and I would grow to 100,000 subscribers in three months and 700 in 10 months. What started as a passion for using editing software when I was 12 years old had now grown into me being able to help hundreds of thousands of women all across the globe to create their dream lives. I found a way to transform all of the adversities I had experienced so far in life, like my dating dilemmas and studying and trying to create my dream life and manifest all my goals and turn them into video lessons so that no one would ever have to make the same mistakes that I once did. And that's another harsh truth. When I was 14 years old, I made the mistake of trying to go after what everybody else was doing. Let me make a back to school video. Let me do a makeup tutorial. That was never close to my heart, nor was it my passion. I was trying to fit in with the crowd and what was popular. But once I started paying attention to my real strengths and talents that were always within me the entire time, was when I finally flourished on this platform. I've been on social media for many years now, trying to create the best content so that I could grow my following, but none of that has compared to the journey that I have had on YouTube. With YouTube, not only have I been able to grow my following, but I've been able to cultivate a very tight-knit, 
positive, like-minded community that are loyal to me. And all of that takes us to the present moment. I have grown my YouTube page by focusing mostly on long-form content and also setting up my second YouTube channel where I can have a more personal connection with my viewers and really cultivate that close-knit community feeling. That way I get to play around with my creative freedom because I have two channels where I can play around with two completely different niches, one giving advice and one experimenting with fashion, vlogs and lifestyle, all while reaching new audiences and being rewarded financially because of how YouTube takes such good care of their creators. I might have gotten a few hundred thousand views on a TikTok or an Instagram post, but on YouTube, that's where it really counts. All of those followers have then translated to this tight-knit, positive, like-minded community who are loyal, who come back for every single video, who comment what they want to see, who help each other out and give each other advice in the comments, who send me messages regularly sharing where they're at in that self-development journey. And that is truly what means the most rather than a few hundred thousand likes on a selfie that I posted. And that has also played a huge role in my success. When you learn the process of converting a follower into a fan so that you can create a community, that's when you start growing exponentially. And now I'm gonna share those secrets with you. Chapter two, personal branding and planning. This is for when you are just starting out and everything you need to know. So you need to get your personal brand right. What is this? This is who you are, what you focus on, like your niche, your unique personality and energy, your values and your unique qualities that you bring to the table as a creator. For example, let's say what you focus on is beauty. Maybe your value is you only use cruelty-free vegan makeup or you always show real skin and texture. Maybe when you're doing your makeup tutorials, you're doing ASMR or you're speaking with a very calm energy and editing style, which is your unique qualities. And then when it comes to who you are, why did you start doing makeup? What's your story that got you here? Is it that you like to transform yourself to experiment with your creativity? Is it to enhance your favorite features? Is it to help people become their most confident selves? Step two, from here, you're going to research your niche and you need to understand this all, okay? You're not gonna slack on this step. Some people are just like, oh, I wanna do self-development videos because this person's doing it and it looks good. Oh, I'm gonna do beauty because I like makeup. Go. <laughs> girl. You need to fully understand this niche and industry and all of the trends that come with it. For example, what's the evergreen content in your niche? Evergreen content is content that is always searchable. No matter how much time passes, those videos are always going to get views. For example, if your niche is cooking and baking, an evergreen piece of content is how to make the fudgiest brownies. People are always going to want to know that. How to get the perfect sponge cake. That's evergreen content, whereas trendier content for that exact same niche would be bake cinnamon rolls with me for fall. Or I went out and tried to make the exact same croissants from Emily in Paris when that show first came out because people are searching for it at that specific point in time and so you'll get that massive hike in views. Both evergreen content and trendy content work really well and you need to incorporate them both into your strategy. This links on to step number three, don't underestimate trends. Let's continue with our example of the beauty industry and let's talk specifically about this whole blueberry milk nails trend. I know, such a weird trend. It went viral on TikTok thanks to Hailey Bieber. And whether you would actually do this trend or agree with it or not, you can incorporate it into your content if you are a beauty influencer because that is what is relevant at that time. Even the people that are hating on the trend are still searching for it. When they see a video titled like that, they are more intrigued to click on it. And so you need to capitalize on that. It's interesting, it's searchable, and that gives you fast views. So for example, we'll take the TikTok trend of blueberry milk nails and bring it onto YouTube, and then you can create a YouTube video like DIY at home blueberry milk nails. Or another example is a YouTuber called Jordan Teresa, who's actually signed to my agency, lovely girl, and makes amazing YouTube videos. She is not in the beauty industry at all. In fact, all of her YouTube videos are video essays on different topics that people are talking about at the time. She took that simple trend and made it into an entire video dissecting overconsumption within the beauty industry. And she got mad views for it because she took something that was relevant and tied it into what she normally talks about. If she took that exact same YouTube video and titled it overconsumption in the beauty industry, not as many people are going to click on it. It sounds boring. It sounds too academic. But when she titles it with a trend that everyone's searching for, instantly you're like, 
oh, this is problematic, let me find out why. Oh, I've seen this on TikTok, this is relevant. I know about this, let me know more. And this links into step number four. My favorite part about all of this is the ability to tie this in with your creative freedom. You can really make it on YouTube when you trust your own instincts and interests. Why? Because originality propels you into fast growth. What I mean by this is there are gonna be so many people out there telling you YouTube isn't what it used to be, YouTube is too long, no one watches it anymore, it's too hard to grow on that and it's so oversaturated. There are millions of YouTubers for every single niche. I disagree, my friend. This is where creative freedom and originality comes into play. When you take something like beauty, you now need to think, what is the unique stance that I am gonna bring into this? For example, let's talk self-development, which is what I do. There are loads of self-development videos on YouTube, so why did I grow as fast as I did? Because I turned it into something that was unique to me that no one else was offering. And I knew this because I myself was a consumer of self-development content on the internet. I loved it, I'd been searching it for years, and there were so many videos I watched that I was dissatisfied with and I felt like I wasn't getting what I was looking for so I decided to bring that to the table myself. I felt like so many of them were too long and too boring so you know what I did? I structured each of my videos so every single one has chapters. At the beginning of every single one of my videos you will have a list of the video chapters so that you can skip to wherever is relevant for you. I brought in my cartoon characters Lola and Athena to make the video more engaging and more exciting. Then there's the matter of my unique editing style and my energy and my personality that I bring to every single video. You cannot compare me to another self-development creator because I bring something unique to the table even though it's the exact same content. And this is the key to YouTube. No one is telling you that you have to do anything a certain way on this platform and that is gonna be your greatest strength. If I was doing myself the disservice of copying someone else's every single move, I'd always be a step behind. Your main priority should be to get 1% better with every single video. How can I improve my editing style here? What new ideas can I bring to this subject and topic? And the growth will happen naturally from there. This leads us on to the next step, which is multi-format for growth. This basically means that YouTube has made it easier than ever to grow. And I know what you're thinking, girl, no. Trust me, yes. All of a sudden we have YouTube Shorts. We did not have this 10 years ago. With YouTube Shorts, you can make content that you already have floating around on other social media platforms. Now you don't even have to make a 20 minute video. It could be a 15 second video and it could still get 1 million views. It will still get monetized and it will still grow your personal brand. I have seen so many creators get pushed in the algorithm and all they do is produce Shorts content. Now imagine you were doing that and you were doing long form the perfect strategy. When you incorporate YouTube Shorts into your strategy, that's how you start capturing attention and bringing in new viewers. Your long form content is how you hold that attention and convert those followers into fans. And when you have a really good, well-built personal brand that stays consistent with every single video, all it takes is one person discovering a short, coming onto your main channel, and seeing your personal brand just from your titles, your thumbnails, the intros to your videos, and instantly understanding what you're about. They don't even need to watch the full 20 minute video Video to start liking you, subscribing, and becoming a fan. And that leads us on to chapter three, real growth tips that no one talks about but propelled me from 2K to 100K subscribers in three months. This is a compilation of all of the advice that I should have received when I was watching all of the fast YouTube growth tutorials on YouTube but got nothing and had to learn these the hard way. But not you, my friend. Let's get into it. First and foremost, you can film on your damn iPhone. I am so sick of you lot saying, I have to wait till I have a microphone, editing software, this, that, no, 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 no. You start filming, you launch unprepared, you launch ugly, you launch now. The faster you fail, the faster you get practice, the faster you win. Stop delaying your success by waiting to buy the best equipment because none of it actually matters when your content is gold on its own. Step number two, fill the gap. Just like starting a regular business, you have to research the market and then find a gap in the market and fill it so that you can grow your business and be successful. The same goes for YouTube. So like I said, research your niche, what is missing? That is exactly what I did with self-development and I filled that gap. And this brings us onto step number three. The audience is number one. The biggest mistake people make when it comes to YouTube, business, whatever is, what can I get? How can I get more views? How can I get paid more? Me, 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 me. No, 
No, you have to play the long game. When you're going into this, when you're researching your niche, when you're planning, when you're putting together your personal brand, the idea at the forefront of your mind should be, what is this going to give to my viewer? When you are constantly thinking about yourself, your ego, making money, and just doing YouTube so that you can get fame and easy money, the audience will see right through you. When you start thinking about providing value to everybody else rather than what you can get, the quality of your content just goes up just like that. That is exactly what happened to me. I had my first YouTube channel almost 10 years ago and I'd been doing this for two years with no success because I wasn't thinking smarter. At the beginning of this year, I thought, how can I be the best in my niche? How can I leave every single viewer so satisfied, filled with so much new knowledge when they leave my videos? And because I thought that, not only do I get to help so many people around the world, but because they're satisfied, they obviously are gonna subscribe. They're going to keep watching my videos. They're going to support me. They come hand in hand. The magic formula to conquering the YouTube algorithm is a high number of clicks, a high amount of watch time right? Both of those equal YouTube promoting you on the explore page of YouTube, basically, which is like the for you page. They will push you out to loads of people who have never watched your videos before. I was on the explore page of YouTube every single day. In fact, I still am for so many people and that's why I get so many subscribers every day. So how do you get those things? This leads on to step number four, your new strategy. Listen, people have short attention spans, okay? We know it with the rise of TikTok and everything else. People don't want to watch 30, 40, 50 minute videos unless they are absolute gold. The hardest pill to swallow is that nobody cares about you. Nobody wants to hear your life story until you've made it. So if you are starting out and you are beginning every single YouTube video with, yeah, so I did this today and this and this, and this is what's been going on in my life. And oh my God, when I was younger, this is what I went through and that's why I'm making this video today. No, no, instantly, I'm off, I'm off. I, I came to this video because the title of it was best makeup products to buy. Why are you telling me your whole life story? This is where hooks and structure come into play. When you have a really good structure, like you're posting the timestamps of your video in the description or in the comments so that people can get to where they wanna get to, Instantly, your watch time is gonna be higher because less people are gonna be clicking off your video from boredom. It's your responsibility to put as much knowledge into that video and offer it to the viewer as soon as they click. And that's what a hook is. Think about it. The best strategy to fast growing TikTok is when you're scrolling and somebody says, stop scrolling, and then they start talking about something straight away. Or you go onto a TikTok and they start by saying, I'm gonna give you five reasons why you should stop doing this. Or I'm gonna give you the best solution to solve this problem. and they tell you within 20 seconds. So I saw that performing really well on TikTok and I brought it onto YouTube and it's done wonders for me. But the other part of the formula is higher clicks. You wanna make your video so attractive when it's on the screen and people are searching for them that they click yours instead of all of the hundreds that are around your video. And you do this with SEO and thumbnails. SEO stands for search engine optimization and I severely underestimated this, but basically once you master it, it will help improve where your videos rank when people are searching for that topic. When you pair SEO with the best thumbnail, your views are gonna skyrocket. And I once heard a YouTuber say that when she spent a few hours just perfecting her thumbnail, her AdSense revenue doubled. Like a good title and thumbnail can be the difference between 10K views and 100K views. So let's start with SEO. Whatever your video title is gonna be, you're gonna search that topic into Google. Let's say it's how to get the perfect makeup base. When you go onto Google, there will be loads of suggested searches. Suggested searches is what majority of people are also searching when it comes to that category. And then you wanna tie that into your SEO strategy. For example, you might title your video um, best base products for your makeup routine. And then in brackets in the same title, you wanna put in the keywords that everybody else is searching. Affordable products, drugstore products, flawless base, easy, in 10 minutes, if that's what people are looking for with that specific subject. You then wanna insert those same terms with hashtags and you'd put those in the descriptions or right at the bottom of the description, you can write out all of these keywords, which will basically help the YouTube algorithm to understand what your video is more specifically about and then help you to target Get people who are searching for what you've made a video about but they haven't searched the exact title that you've titled your video but because you've put all these extra words in your YouTube tags and your YouTube description your video still gets pushed out to them the right wording is everything and it can be the thing that makes you stand out from all of the competition okay let's test this theory I'm gonna search makeup tips 
and we're gonna see which video has the most views even though all of them are gonna be on the same subject. Here we have one that's on 800,000 views. This is called 14 makeup techniques that will literally transform your face. And look at the thumbnail, you guys. That's 800,000 views as opposed to this creator who captioned her video, my current favorite makeup, which is at 200,000 views. And her thumbnail is just a selfie. I'm sure she has a great video. She's also got great views, but this creator has made the exact same video, but she's got a really engaging thumbnail and she's got loads of keywords in her title. Here we have another one with 2.2 million views. How to look better without makeup seriously works. I search makeup tips right and now i'm being fed a video that has nothing to do with applying makeup on my face but how i can achieve the same look without having to apply makeup on my face i didn't search those words at all but youtube is showing me this video because so many people clicked on it look at how good that thumbnail is oh my god she looks amazing and she's not even wearing makeup i guarantee you in her youtube tags she's written out makeup tutorial makeup tips because she knows people are going to be searching for that and that's why she has 2.2 million views Think smarter, people. As we said before, attention is everything. And in order to get attention, you need to gain value. The way that I add value into my videos is putting out the video chapter structure, putting out the timestamps, having a hook, jumping right into it. But the way that you can, or a lot of other YouTubers do, is for example, if we keep on with the beauty niche, instead of making one YouTube video called my favorite beauty products, you're gonna split that into five YouTube videos. Now, not only will five YouTube videos help you reach bigger audiences because now they have five pieces of content to watch and because it's split into five videos now you have higher ad revenue because there's more things to click on but you are adding more value because when you make a video about my favorite beauty products some people are only looking for one specific thing one person she just wants to find a good eyeliner so you're going to turn the exact same content that you would have put into one video called my favorite beauty products and you're going to turn it into the best products for a snatched instagram ready base the best lip combos for brown skin. Drugstore eyeliners that won't budge all day. Eyebrow products that are worth the money versus not worth the money. You get the gist. You could talk about all of those things in one video, but because it's so long, a lot of people get bored and they click off. Each of those titles are so engaging and interesting that one person probably will click on all of them and watch them. And the last tip I'm gonna give is that your editing should be on point. Let's take YouTuber Kelly Stamps as an example. Kelly Stamps grew so fast, like she was getting millions and millions of views when she had just started, not because she was changing lives or she was talking about anything revolutionary. A lot of the time she was doing comedy videos or just talking about her day-to-day -day life like anybody would be, but her editing style and comedic timing was so good and so unique, that is exactly what kept people watching and wanting to subscribe to her. Now, the important thing here is don't let this stray you. Don't be like, oh, I don't know how to edit. Just learn a few little zooms, a few little sound effects. A lot of YouTubers like Nella Rose will cut away from their video to insert a meme from the internet. Super simple and easy to do, but it adds that comedic element and good editing style to their video, which also adds to their personal brand. Good editing is so important to the video because it makes the video seem shorter than it is because there's all these extra things that you're adding into every few minutes of the video. It's keeping the viewer engaged and hooked, which increases their watch time because they don't feel like they've been watching for so long. And when you have good watch time, YouTube pushes you out to loads of other viewers, hence growing your YouTube channel way faster. And that brings us to the last chapter of the video, the homework chapter. If you're new here, every single video ends with a homework chapter so I can give you guys actionable steps so you're actually putting all of the advice you've just learned into practice. So your first homework task, if you wanna grow your YouTube channel, is to write out your personal brand. Who are you? What's your niche? What are the unique elements that you bring to your channel and your viewers? When you're doing your personal brand, I also want you to write underneath what is the value that you're going to bring to people that not everybody is getting because other people aren't doing the same thing. Homework task number two is to research your niche. I need you to understand it fully. What are all the trends that are going around? What's controversial? What do people need? What's the gap in the market that people are missing? How are you going to solve people's pain points with your content that will keep them watching and help them gain trust in you as a creator? Homework task number three, practice filming and being authentic. Before I launched this YouTube channel, I recorded my first ever YouTube channel, which was a get to know me Q&A three times. The first three whole videos never made it onto YouTube because I was just 
familiarizing myself with talking on camera so by the time I actually posted it I was so used to it it felt natural I felt like a pro at it but don't expect your videos to be perfect right away you need to familiarize yourself with the routine and lifestyle of being a youtuber and being on camera every single day nothing can be embarrassing to you anymore nobody's opinions should matter to you anymore Hermit task number four master SEO there are online courses that you can take for this you can go on Skillshare there'll be other YouTube videos out there just talking about SEO so that you can learn about it in depth what words are people searching for when it comes to the content you are creating and how are you going to incorporate those words into your titles your descriptions and your YouTube tags homework task number five familiarize yourself with Canva learn your editing style practice what your thumbnails are going to look like what the thumbnails everybody else is doing how are yours going to stand out from theirs what editing elements are you going to add in is it sound effects memes zooms transitions special effects music and your last homework task is to be confident and launch unprepared. The biggest disservice you can do for yourself is constantly waiting for the time to be perfect because in the time that you were waiting, somebody else launched without any knowledge and surpassed you and you hadn't even done anything yet. And that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe because I make new videos here every single week. I hope you guys learned something. If you did, comment down below and let me know. I always read your comments and take all of your feedback into account so that I could become 1% better in every video I put out. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. Remember to check out all of my other social links in the description and I will see you in the next one. Bye.